I, I won't lose. Hello, this is Massimum347 with an exciting paper of Phoenix White Ace Attorney. And today, we are going to go to the day 3 of Turnabout Sisters in trial. This time, we are going to defend against ourselves, against Mr. White. Will we prevail? Well, we'll find out. Why right now? <laughs> September 9th, 9.52am, District Court, Defendant, Lobby Number 1. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. Uh, Phoenix? Look! Prosecutor Edgeworth. I received a call from the Public Prosecutor's Office yesterday. He told me that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth. No matter how he tries to attack his testimony, if I raise an objection, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What? Does White have the judge in his pocket too? So, you're saying I'm going to be guilty? End of story? I will do anything to get my verdict, Mr. White. Anything. Why? Why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent? How can you know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. So I make that my policy. Edgeworth. You've changed. Hmm? Phoenix, you know. Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix White. Phoenix? Well, court will be opening for session soon. What? But wait. Your defense attorney isn't even here yet. He's not. I'll be defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. Ooh, 10 a.m. on the dot. In district court. Let's do this thing. The court is now in search of the tribe, Mr. Phoenix White. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. White, are you sure you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. As we see, the events are already quite clear to the court. Today we'll hear the testimony of another witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecutor may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like... It's like he already knows why! Hmm, if anyone's going to raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. It doesn't actually matter if we who object or not, because the witness is still going to come. But if I prefer not to go objection, see if I just try. Mr. Edgeworth, you owe an explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify in a trial against Miss May of Fay? Hmm, I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, at the time, I thought that Miss May's feeling was all that would be needed. Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. Great, he gets a show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the Look at that cheeky grin. Bastard. <laughs> Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage? Uh, your name? Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear, oh, do my locutions confuse? Name! These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanco Nino. I am a CEO, or use a more common term, the president of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim? Miss Mia Fang? That would be a negatory. No, I did not. You were at the Gateway Hotel the night of the murder? Correct. And you witnessed the murder from there? Uh -huh. Why do you tell what you already know? Very well, Mr. White, you may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. Why 
Why do I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm left man standing? <laughs> I hope you have made your peace of God, Mr. Let him have it, Phoenix. Let's do this. I know I've said that already, but I don't care. <laughs> Let's see. It was about 9 o'clock, I believe. I was quietly perusifying. Uh, that's weaving to you some papers by the window. Then I heard a pendant coming from outside. Surprised, I turned and looked at the building across the way. It was then I saw him. A spiky-haired man attacking the woman with long hair. He used to say that the man was none other than you, Mr. Lloyd. I called Miss May over at once. She, too, was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she, she ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction. Then, it was all over. Hmm, if things occurred as you have testified, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well. Defendant? Uh, I mean, Mr. White? Your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, now it does seem... Bring forward, but just keep pressing on him. Believe me, you will get something. Hold it. How do you know what time it was? Because I am always absolutely perfect, you know. No, 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 you're not getting away with that. You are so mistrusting, Mr. Lawyer. So, what was the proper term for secretary again? Anyway, Miss May ordered room service at 9 o'clock. It happened soon after the room service at 1. Hmm, that's what Miss May said too. No, they would think to press further, but actually just hold back. There isn't really much to say here. I don't see anything to gain by attacking him on this point any further. Okay, what were you doing at that time? I was quietly pursuing her death. Do you do that again? <laughs> I swear. By window? You mean the one directly across from the Fay and Co. law office? Correct. That is the only window you see. And there you are reading papers? Correct. The Gatewater is a businessman's hotel, and I'm a busy man who had business to do. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. A bedlam? It must have been when you attacked, I assume. We see. Continue. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. So you were reading your papers until you heard that sound? But of course, I am no snoop. Peeping out of windows at night? No snoop? Yeah, right. You made a career out of snooping. It was then I saw him, a swaggy haired man attacking the woman with long hair. Swaggy head? Needed to say that the man was older than you, Mr. Lloyd. Hold it. What you just said directly conflicts with Miss Mayer's testimony. Miss May clearly said that the ceiling looked like a girl. I've always been proud of my eyesight, Mr. Lloyd. Just what is your eyesight? Counting both eyes, 40. 40? Don't add them together! I think the witness is trying to say his eyesight is good. Hey, science is judge on anyway! And what did you do then? I called Miss May over at once. She too was surprised, of course. What was Miss May doing at that time? She had just finished watching a soap opera on the TV and was weeping openly. Did you know she had been tapping the Fay off his phone? Irrelevant! That has nothing to do with the case at hand. I care not. I will answer the lawyer's bold inquiry. Miss May was acting alone when she tapped the phone of this Miss Fay woman. You make a good politician, Mr. White. Ho oh, oh, ho, oh, after all, I am El Presidente. Please continue. The victim, she, she ran away. But you gave chase. Can you be a little more detailed about that? I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course. Comprende. I understand. The victim was attacked by you. And ran to the left. Okay, yep, yeah, here we go. Think about it. One to the left. Now that doesn't make any sense. Remember what the other person said? Saying that you that the, that the uh, murder ran to the white? You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? As you know, I am always absolutely perfect. Perhaps you should change your testimony to reflect this new detail. 
The victor ran to that and you gave chase. That seems a bit odd, don't you think? Are you sure about that? How many times must I say it? I am absolutely perfect. End of story. How many times must I hear that? Psst! Phoenix! Doesn't something about that strike you as a little odd? Well, there is a terrible impact. It was all over. Wait a minute. Something seems odd there. Yeah, it's time to present evidence. There we go, May testimony. The victim dodged the attack, then ran to the wise, but she was caught and struck. There we go, you see that's odd. He said he ran to, to, to the murder, ran to the left, but she said he ran to the wise, but they were both supposedly in the same room, and that doesn't make any sense, and that's what we need to present. Objection! Wait, right there. Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left. But they directly contradict Miss May's testimony. She clearly has said that the victim ran right. Oh, <laughs> it is simply you have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here, and the victim was here. If the victim went to the left, as you claim she did, she would have been running directly away from the door. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Very strange. I did see her run to the left. I did. Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run there. So he did witness the killing. Wait a second. Mr. White? Yes, Your Honor. Miss May says right, and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? Ah, yet yeah, they're both right. Think about it. The thing, think you need to be very careful here. They can't both. They c they're not both wrong. They're both correct. The only other way that he could have saw went to the left, and if Miss May saw went to the right, is if Mr. White was actually in the room and Miss May was watching from the hotel. So we both are right. Both witnesses are telling the truth for once. <laughs> I doubt it. However, that does not clear up the, the contradiction. There is one scenario that would explain the conflict to the count. What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. White, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean? He was not viewing the crime from the hotel. He was not in the hotel? Where could he have been? In the law office in Fane Co, of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Show the court where Mr. White is standing. This is one of the other things we have to do sometimes. Like, show where he might be standing. Well, for instance, you see that K? K stands for the killer, V victim. So, let's do it near the K, it should... Oh, whoops, this is the touchscreen one. Oh, there we go. It's with the Y. Yeah. This is where he was. Look. When the victim ran for the door, if he was watching from this point to him, it would appear that she ran to the left. Please, this is no time for jokes in ill taste. That is where the killer was standing. Order. I will have order. Anyone disturbing the order of this one's will be held in contempt. Mr. White, what are you suggesting? What, Scallion? Objection! The postulations of the defense are a distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far fetched. Ho ho ho. You provided me so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing? The 
the hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I have been unclear, and for this, I apologize. Mr. Your Honor, am I being allowed to testify once more? Very well. Let's hear your revised testimony. Good luck. You can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. She went to the left. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first went to the left. And then you hit her, savagely. That is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered a final blow. That is what Miss May saw. You see? You hit her twice! Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Ugh, yeah. Hmm, that does seem to make sense. Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? You bet I will! I mean, yes, it won. She went to the left. Yeah. Okay, now... That, now that one seems a lot more easier to, um... Figure out. Actually, yeah. to explain. You Americans, always so impatient, it does not become you. Hey buddy, you're an American too! <laughs> when you assaulted the girl, she first went to the left. What do you mean first? First? That is what comes before what happens next. You speak English, right? Please, be sit back, relax, or try to use simple words for your benefit. First, she went to the left, and then... And then you hit her such That is what I saw. I didn't hear anyone! No, no, Mr. White, there is no point hiding things from this court. I'm not hiding anything! <laughs> the prosecution requests that the defense will refrain from interrupting the testimony. Mr. White, you have been warned. Why is he mad at me? Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the White. What do you mean, next? Next is what comes after first. <laughs> I know that! Then that is all you need to know, Mr. Lawyer. As I said, she turned and made a desperate dash at the You chased her and delivered a final blow. Stop saying it, it was me! But it was you! Mr. White, I feel clear if it want you, and show us proof. Yeah, can I do nothing, White? Nothing? May I continue? That is what Miss May saw. So, each of you saw different parts? Absolutely. That's right, of course. Where did he pick up that annoying phrase? Anyway, moving along. You see? You hit her twice. Okay, now, this is the one that really irks you. Hit her twice. However, during Mia's autopsy, Yeah. Remember, the blur is instantaneous, and the person I looked after it, so that doesn't make sense, so you present that. Objection! Mr. White, the victim died from a single blow! What do you have to say to that? Uh, uh, now's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court you were absolutely perfect? Hmm. I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. <laughs> Your Honor, if you can ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a 10 minute break. Yes? Yes, quite. The witness is confused because he's lying! I emphatically request that there be no break, Your Honor! Yeah! We want justice! Don't let him get away! Ah, very well. If the witness would care to revise his testimony, 
The crowd's on my side. There's only this one now, White. Mr. White? Oh, uh, uh, okay. Two accounts. <laughs> um, well, see, I, I looked at the other window and I heard that thing fall. Then, the next moment, I saw Miss Mia run to the left. The killer, you, attacked her, but she dodged. Um, and then, she turned and ran to the front of the door. Then you did her in with a single blow. Flop. Ugh, now you s hmm. Flop, indeed. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see. It is hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. Now that you, you can clearly see now by his facial expressions and when I was reading that testimony that well <sighs> said when he heard that thing for <laughs> Yeah, press that first statement. You heard that thing for? What exactly was that thing? Uh oh, oh oh that, um the glass lights then. Right, the one that had fallen over the scene. Phoenix, doesn't something about that strike you as odd? Yeah, very odd. Yeah, that is odd. I press verb. It's the what? Huh? What? You say you saw the glass light stand? Y yes. Then change your testimony to reflect that. Sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, okay. A light stand was lying on the floor when I looked. Okay, now we've got you. <laughs> now he's revised his testimony. So then we present this. The glass jars, the broken wings of a glass light stand, broken beyond all recognition. If it's broken beyond recognition, then how did he know? Objection! Mr. White, it was impossible for you to have seen the light stand. What? The stand broke into pieces when it fell. Whew. Just by seeing the broken pieces, you would have no idea it was a light stand. So tell me, exactly when was it you saw the stand? Answer the question! It, it's an obvious, I saw the stand before it fell over. So, you saw the stand before the victim was attacked? Then, to correct, there would be no problem, right? Hmm. <laughs> so big problem. <laughs> There's a big problem, uh, I mean, problem here. The problem is this, Mr. White, let me make sure I have this straight. You saw the glass light stand through a window from the hotel before the incident occurred. Correct. That is so. It's conclusive, definitive, undeniable, and impeachable. No, it's impossible. You couldn't have seen the stand. What? Why couldn't he? Why couldn't he? You have proof? I sure do, Your Honor. A person in the hotel could not have seen the stand before it fell over. The proof is the floor pans. The murder scene in a fake office touch a checkbook of details. Look at this! These are the floor pans to see of the murder, yes? Correct, Your Honor. Look now. I mean, now look. If you were to look through the window at the office, this is the area you would be able to see. Here! Yeah, you see. Well, note that the stand is not within this visible area. Mm-hmm. Exactly. See that broken glass over there? Press that yellow, wet, white part which represented the visual point? You might have seen maybe bits of glass, but how do you know it was a stand? Especially if it was unrecognizable for the beginning. So yeah, it would make any sense. Well, Mr. White? What do you have to say to that? Uh, uh, 
good luck to you! Mr. White, if you were in a gate water hotel as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over! In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after all it fell either! There's no way you could have recognized a broken chance at glass light stand! So, when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell! And the only place you could have seen that from is inside the Fable offices! In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place! Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Light? Mr. White? You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor. I. I. Miss Mia. Here. Looks like we're about to get our verdict. Objection! That's far enough, Phoenix White. What? <laughs> I forgot about Edward. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now? Hmm? What? I said you should confess your crime. Ergo, confess that you placed the wire attack. Oh, wait, wire attack? Order, order! Mr. Edward, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court, Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Google. He ordered his secretary. Miss April May to tap the law office and it's fair. What does that have to do? Your Honor, the question is, when was the white hat facing the office and by who? No! You, you wouldn't! Mr. White, in order to face the white hat, you enter Miss Fay's office. Am I correct? You're correct! You are most correct, Miles. Give me a break! <laughs> yes, in order to face the white I breached the Fay and Co. law offices. That is when I saw that curious curse of Now I'm confused! Please explain to the court what this all means, Mr. Edgeworth! There they go. Mr. Phoenix White was made his has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the class stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand at the very moment of murder. Thus, Mr. White would like you to believe that Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a mere fact that Mr. White had been to that office well before the murder took place. He went to face the wiretap. He could have seen the gaslight stand then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix White's theory is revealed for the basis conjecture it is. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretap. <laughs> Leave it to me. I... I feel faint. Yeah. Damn you, Ezra. The wiretapping. Yeah. It was in the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the fake home law office. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. Hmm. So you saw the stand before the night of the incident? And this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over? By the sound? Oh correct. That is White. Let me see. Very well. Mr. White, you may cross examine. Yeah! What am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Felix. No, this doesn't look good, people. In this case, press everything. Do you have proof? Objection! Miss April May knew the end of Miss Faye's phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Huh? Why it's... I have entered the... Oops. Hold it! I'm gonna hit my thumb with again. Was it really you that went to the office? Or was it Miss May? Objection! Unidentified fingerprints, several days old, were found in the Faye and Co. offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. I know Edra. He's already want to check on those prints. 
now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to the Fairy Co. after the license. Of course. The Stupid. Stupid. Why did you tap me as foe? Objection! This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. We call the Detective Agency of sorts. You know, we need to protect client confidentiality. That is... Who am I going to play? Why did you notice something as innocent as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a last impression of Such a brutacious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. Damn it! There's nothing there for me to press him on! Oh well, maybe he's rattling this and I can bust something out of him. Uh oh, don't tell me you've run out of ammo. <laughs> tusk Tusk, I'm afraid that is as far as you go, Mr. White. The time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought, honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. White, as you give, are you giving up? Yes, Your Honor. Phoenix. Phoenix, over here. I know you that voice. Mia! Never give up, Phoenix! Mia! And I fainted! <laughs> where, where, where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating? Hey, you're funny, Rick. Hey, Phoenix! There's no way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. You're Did you know the fake women have strong psychic powers? When you accepted your defeat in court, it appears that uh, that was enough of a shock to awaken Mayor's true powers. So, Mayor is channeling you? Mia? That's right. I am Mayor, but I am also Mia. Now I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Mayor never gave up. You can't even. That's why I, that's why I came here to tell you. But, we don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have that receipt in the courtroom, right? Uh, oh, yeah, the one that wrote Mayo on? Phoenix, White wrote that, not me. So, so what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The front? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. One thousand? Wow, big spender. Item, glass light stand? Date of purchase, September 4th. September 4th? That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the day before I was killed. Whoa! Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. He said he saw the stand the week before the murder. There you go. I think the fall is about to reconvert. Reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right! What a true friend. Channeling. <sighs> Resurrecting Sortly from the grave to help me out. <laughs> well, okay, maybe that's a bit weird, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not resurrecting. Like, get a spirit channel. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Phoenix White. Yeah, is the defendant rather. You were right, Mr. White? <laughs> yeah, yes! <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start where we left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to go back to. The cross-examination of Mr. White is finished. All that is required now is read the past judgment on the defendant, Phoenix White. Hmm. Your Honor, please, give me one more chance. I promise you, this is the last time I'll ask you. Hmm. 
but Mr. Edgeworth has noted the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have an opinion on this matter? I say, let us give Mr. Phoenix White his last chance. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Oh, right, we got him now. Thanks to Mia, we know exactly what to do. This one is more obvious than ever, unless you, you know, unless you completely skip through the dialogue, which is would be stupid. So yeah, obviously present the receipt. Objection! Look closely at this. See the word mayor written in blood? Bruh, <laughs> you're grasping. I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. Is it the other side? Your Honor, would you tell the court what is written on the other side of the receipt? Hmm. Well, a glass night stand and a date purchase. Right, that's the date before the murder. You see? Mr. White, when you allegedly entered Fay and Co.'s office at the beginning of September, the stand could not have been there. Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? No, it's impossible. Uh oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then, that is all for the trial of... OBJECTION! Not so fast, Phoenix White. <laughs> oh, what? No way can he wear his out of this one! Oh, wait, I forgot. It's Edgeworth. There is a certain threat of not the defendant's club. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix White is innocent. Uh, go. I would like to request one more day before Phoenix White is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. Hmm. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. Yeah, he's objecting this. Mr. White's guilty is obvious. I mean, it's White's guilt is obvious. There is no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm. Well, Mr. Edward? If anyone is going to call Mr. White to trial, it would be me, the prosecution. I need a day of certain whether you claim to have any basic in fact evidence. Hmm, I see. Objection denied. What? The completion of the trial of Phoenix White will be postponed until tomorrow. No! There's no telling what will happen if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is sure to call me. Or just make up something. After, and after Mia showed it to help me and all. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course. Thank you for your time. God. The witness will say, Mia? Felix, read this note out loud. Mia? What's this? Ah. Your Honor, if I may. You're quite persistent today, Mr. White. You bet I am. My life is earning on this one. I have something I would like to read to the court. And... A list of people's names in Mia's handwriting. And with this, this is the last bit of we need to go. Uh, Mia, you're really old doll. Thank you. The memo Mia had given me was a list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. S stop! Desist! Hold! But please, stop! Make him stop! How How did you get that list? Mr. White, admit your guilt right here, right now. Or else, this list will be released to the press. I... I confess. I confess. I... I did it. I hit it. I hit Miss Mia with the finger. Case closed, Your Honor. <laughs>
Oh, what facial expressions. Well, I say that we have to go to destroy him. Mr. White? Uh, yes, you are. You've done it again. That was quite a spirited defense. He <laughs> yes, you are. I guess you could say that. If only you knew how spirited it was. Well, this court finds a defense. Ahem, rather, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix White. Not guilty. That is all. The court is adjourned. You know, I wish they did that in real life, you know. If someone's found not guilty, they just throw confetti. I mean, yeah. Although, to be honest, I'd probably be down in real court, but you know. I can dream. <laughs> Ooh! Well, I never thought I'd be saying this again. But congratulations! You're lucky I was born a fake. I'm the guy both you and me on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You risked a lot to help me, and me. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you live? My time here is running out. Huh? Mayor's powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. What? No! There's still so much to say! Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Chief! <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix? Can you come to the office tonight? Say, 9 o'clock. The office? I'll see you later. Chief! Mia! Being here, it's hard not to think about that night. You came? Mia? I was kind of worried you might not. Huh? Of course I came. Well then? I'm pretty hungry, how about a burger? Me? Bruh, ha ha. you should see your face. Me? What are you talking about? It's me, Maya. Maya? What, did I look like my sister? You look like you were her. Um, I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Uh, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. See? Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Huh? She means the office. This office. Someone has to help with the new wife and co law officer's wife. And you better put me. Mayor Fair, the boy in Virginia. Wait, no, not a second thought. Let's make this casual. Yo, Nick. Mayor here, ready to get down to business. You don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? It's a great name. Mia said that's what your friend Larry called you. Nick? You know what this means? We're partners. You know, when I think about it, it is Maya's fault I'm here now. But if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Right in code offices. It's got a good ring to it. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Phoenix. Now I'll always be here. Watching. <laughs> Right, okay Nick, let's do it. Huh? Dude, what? Burgers, dummy! Burgers! There's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on, times are wasted. Okay, wait up! And that's the end of episode 2. Oh yeah, you've done it people. And with that, we are now finished with episode 2. Now we're on episode 3. Next time, we'll be doing a turnabout samurai. Like I said, the other cases from now on, we're going to be really long. And this one is no exception. But yeah, pretty heated and close there. If we went for Mia, you know. Sort of. It's... it's talking, speaking from the dead, we would be royally screwed. And she would actually be helping us as well later on during the game. From time to time, sort of. It's kind of hard to do, it's a little random. But she she helped. She still has lots to teach us. But, yeah. And with that, we're finished with episode 2, and now on episode 3, so this is Master Room 347. The game is a type of RPG the platformer. Stay classy.